Hi, good afternoon, everybody. And I'm here to present in the morning, you have seen these wonders of, of the underwater, underground world. And today I'm talk a little bit on some of the tools that we have been developing to explore some of these fantastic places. So last summer, this robot, UX1neo, explored the Ranish Abyss in Czech Republic. And this is the natural flooded cave with, uh, with known to be the, uh, expectedly the, mo the most deep one. And we managed to beat the world record. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the robot, about who are behind it, why we are interested on that, and how we managed to get there. So let's start to, well, you already know because you have seen the movie in the presentation. So these are the kind of things that we do, robotics. So like uh, Ricardo has told you, I work in robotics. And those are the kind of tools. And one of those, you are going to see images of this. And why are we interested in exploring um, the deep underground? Well, we have a lot of reasons. We have been discussing of that on these days. And there are some practical reasons why we may even want to, to explore man-made uh, places like flooded underground mines. So there are obviously a, a, a scarcity of, of minerals in Europe, and this is a concern from the point of view of the European. And in, this, in these environments, we have more than 35,000 mines closed in Europe. And there are a lot of reasons why we may want to to explore these kinds of environments. We could be interested in simply to know their cultural heritage and to map their environment for archaeological reasons, like we did we done in Acton Mine in the UK. Or we might want to have interest in understanding, having environmental concerns, to know the stability of the terrain, and to have, like we have done in, in Idria Mine in, in Slovenia. And obviously, most of these underground environments man-made, but also the, the, the natural ones, many of them are flooded. So this unknown, uh, unknown territory is obviously very dangerous, and in many cases, it's impossible to explore by divers. So it's almost impossible to, to dive in, this, in, this, in some of these, in, in these, these environments. And so we think that robotics can help doing this. Well, this is a fantastic scenario for people like me that love to build robots. And so... It's a difficult scenario, and this is the key issue. So we look at this, and we see different images taken from some of these scenarios that we're talking about. The environment varies a lot. I make robots for the sea, and the sea environment has some big constraints. So it's like you can get down, it gets deep, a variation of temperature, but it gets a large surfaces. But in these environments, I can have one place where the water is crystal clear, another place where the water is completely murky, it doesn't see anything. You can have high currents or zero currents. So the, you can have all the kinds of obstacles, well, which is a nightmare for a robot, in particular if you want him to work uh, alone. So what kind of things that we want to develop? Well, things like this. For the people that have seen this movie, this is science fiction. So you want to have a system, a robot, that will launch into the environment and get a map from the robot, possibly more than one robot. What thing did, you, did we get, in fact? Well, things like this. We didn't make what we've seen before, but we are reaching there. So how did we start it from this? So we started from concept that you see on the end of the, of the slide to the final prototype that we see here. One of those prototypes is here in front of you, UX1. And this prototype, you can see a brief explanation of what kind of things of it is? It is a, 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 a sphere of aluminum with a, a watertight aluminum hull weighting 100, 110 kilograms with a lot of sensors and specific hardware that was developed to help us to, to, to explore these tools. As you're going to see in some images, there were some practical problems in the exploration. So we have a new version, which is as the overall same size, but with new added benefits with, because it has higher depth rating, more sensors even so, and it is even more easy to operate. So how does this, do these robots see the world? Sometimes we ask, well, we need to be careful because 
I'm not sure that the water will be crystal clear. So typically they use sound, sonar. So in our robots, you can see clearly on that, on that uh, vehicle a small disk in the front, which is a multi-beam sonar that will provide you a scan of the environment. You are seeing here the, the, a shaft in uh, Solotvini, Ukraine, in a salt mine, and you see clearly the structures on the, the, the metallic th structure on the, on the shaft, clearly seen on the sound. And we can do this even if we have zero visibility, and we've done that in some places like Idria or South Crofty. So this same sensor can also provide you an acoustic image so that you can see. You, you are going to see a, a stair, so you can see a stair, and then you start to see a, a, a little bit of the wall. So this is the, the, the way that the robots see the environment. So we need more sensors to survive. So we have also a rotating scanning sonar that provides you, you can see there those dots in, in blue. These dots in blue are the walls of a shaft where the robot is diving. And you see some bars. Those bars are obstacles in the way. And the robot needs to have this information in order to know what's around it, and at least to, to survive against it. Not only the robot can see with, with sound, but it also can see with cameras. This robot has five cameras, UX1 Neo is F6, and we developed a custom development camera that not only gives you images, but can also project laser lines. You can see here UX1 Neo projecting a set of laser lines on the wall, and it uses these laser lines to produce a detailed 3D map of your environment. So I simultaneously, I get an image, and I'll get a detailed 3D mine. You see little uh, uh, white dots. Those white dots are small, thin ropes that are on this, on this environment. This was tested in Molnarianos in, in Hungary. It was a cave that was natural cave, but it is used for, for diving training, and so they have some ropes. And ropes are one of the biggest challenges for the navigation of these robots do not get entangled. One of the reasons why they are so circular is try to avoid that. So how the, do these robots know where they are? This is something crucial. I want to explore a place. I want to see what, what's down there. And I want to get the map. But to, know, to have a map, I need to know how do they position themselves. Well, we don't, unfortunately, we don't have GPS underwater. And in this case, it's even very difficult to put additional acoustic navigation system. So basically, they need to rely on Doppler velocity measurements against the wall or the bottom of the, of the, of the, the walls. Then they need to have a, some kind of inertial system that allows them to know how their motion is doing. And then all of this is fused together in a solution that provides the location of the robots. How do they move? Well, they have thrusters, as you can see here. The UX1 Neo has a different configuration of thrusters. but in this case, the robot has an onboard computer that does much of the work for us. So in, sometimes in some of these images that I'm going to show further, you're going to see people sometimes using a joystick in, in one of these cases. They are not piloting. They are telling the robot, go. Or they are telling, uh, avoid. Or they are telling, teleprogramming the robot. So the robot itself has a, a relatively high degree of, of operational. In this case, it was completely op uh, uh, autonomous. We just said the robot. I want you to explore this room below a stairs in an underwater environment. And where, where have we been? Well, we have been under Europe in a lot of places. You look at the dots, and you see that we have been in many places. Since 2018, in Katiala, a large mine where we started to developing, to the last mission last November in, 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 in Germany in a, uh, a very long uh, underground flooded mine. So, and including, obviously, Ranich escape. And this is crucial. One of the examples that I wanted to show is the exploration of the Ecton mine. So, Ecton mine, Ecton mine is a, a, a copper mine that was one of the largest copper mines, what is the richest copper mines in the world. It, it brings a lot of, of, of uh, wealth to the Dukov Dangers, and, in, in the, and it was closed in, uh, 19, uh, 1850. So uh, from that time, half of it is below water level, and nothing is known about what is the stage of, of, of this area. Now is a, a UK national park, a national monument, and we use it, in fact, a sibling of that robot, as you can see here. 
And the robot, in this case, is being deployed from inside of the mountain. So we enter through the dry part, and the robot is deployed in different access points in the water. And you can see the, pro the process of, of, of um, exploring this mine. You use it this to gather information about and models that were used in the, in, the, in the process of knowing the current state and, and what was happening below the water level and where, where the, there was a lot of uh, uh, mine equipment and a lot of the story of this environment could be uh, uh, discovered. You can see here on, on our left, some mapping we're using, using the, the laser system to get a very detail, detailed mapping of the system. You can see that the conditions can vary a lot. You saw a lot of silt in the water. If you touch the walls, then you get a lot of, of silt, and this is going to take a while for you to navigate. Another uh, interesting environment was the diving in Sol Solotvino mine. This is a, a salt mine in, in the southern Ukraine. We did this in the end of uh, 2020 uh, for multiple times. And here the challenge is the salt. So this is a, 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 a dive where we use a, a launching system similar to, to what is used at sea as a TMS uh, management system. And one of the reasons why we need to do this is because this kind of environment has a very sharp separation between fresh water and salt water. And the difference is that if we look from here to up, the water is completely fresh or almost fresh, so one density, and from here is almost brine with a very high density. So the robot in the first dive reaches this point and bump it into the wall. So we needed an extra 16 to 20 kilograms of, of weight. And this poses a problem in the first ver version. Obviously, we also did some missions in Kobania. I've seen in, uh, this is also another mine in Hungary. And this is a natural mine. This is a man, clearly a man-made environment. So basically with stairs, with ropes. And here the problem is we, why we choose this? Because we wanted to do autonomous missions where the robot would explore autonomously in a less risky environment where we know that we, in the, in the, if it is possible, we can go there with divers, but we want to deal with these obstacles and to study with these obstacles. And then it leads us to the Ranish mission in the Czech Republic. And in last August, you are going to see, this was done in cooperation with the Czech uh, Spelological Society. They had a fantastic team of human explorators. They have been exploring this mine for the last 50 years, up to 170 meters, the, they set the record of human diver there to 200 meters. And uh, from that below, most of it was unknown or really, really bad unknown. There was a small, uh, there was an expedition with an ROV that went almost to 400 meters, but was, the, the vehicle was cocked in the, in, in the walls because it, it didn't have the navigation, it couldn't position itself. So we did the, the navigation in a different way. We used it the, 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 the robot to dive in the middle of the, of, the, of the chamber, in the middle of the, of the cavern, and continuously uh, 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 map the environment. And the possibilities and the capabilities of the robot in terms of autonomous control, in capabilities of locomotion, and both of perception allow us to do this in an, in, efficient, in an efficient way. And this model that we can see here was obtained in two days that far superseded the uh, last 15, uh, 50 years of human man uh, mapping of the environment. This is the detailed, uh, uh, detailed map. We ended at 450. We may ask, why, why didn't you go further? We think that the, the mine, uh, the, this mine has at least, or this cavern is at least a, a thousand meters depth. Well, we had, at the time, a, a sensor that was limited to 500 meters, so we couldn't go further. So my, one of the next steps is going back and going to the end and see and know what is explore the environment. So what we can gather from here? We got a very special and specific robot that has combined in a very small space a, a robot that can go to more than one and a half kilometers of depth, that can have autonomous control and a huge number of sensors for this kind of systems. And it can do it and survive, in a, which is critical. And we couldn't make this if we weren't in the field. If we didn't start it in a, 
large mine with good conditions and ended up in Granite Cave. So where are we heading? Well, there are lots of challenges, Ch practical challenges if I, I want to explore very large labyrinthic maps like we've seen in the morning. Some of them are flooded, how can I do it? We need clearly more perception. This is the key in order to have survivability on the robot. Our next steps is going further, going farther, having more robots and doing more autonomously. And use it in other scenarios, it's at sea and confined space like shipwrecks or other environments, or even out of the space in other planets. So I will say that we have a lot of exciting uh, challenges in robotics exploration, and I leave you with this. If you want to see more, 26 minutes of, of movie about all this story played with a lot of time. Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you so much. So much.